All right, so welcome to the first article review that I'm gonna do in this format. I plan on doing several, uh, especially if you guys like them. Uh, this is mainly just to give you kind of uh, bite-sized breakdowns of different articles that relate to the combat sports. So the first one we're gonna look at, and it may be familiar to some of you who have followed me for a while because this is one that I referenced in my previous, one of my previous videos on shin conditioning. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna go through it in a little bit more detail. But bone mineral density in competitive athletes. Journal of Exercise and Nutrition is the journal that was published in, and then Antonio et al. are the authors. Okay, this is also gonna be cited in the description if you wanna download it and follow along as we go. Okay, so introduction. It lays out a pretty good case, and it, there already exists a, an abundance of evidence saying that resistance training helps maintain or improve bone mineral density in several populations. So in the second paragraph, if you're following along of the, the intro, it talks about this 12-week program that combined resistance training and cycling and increased the bone mineral density in the lower extremity and lumbar spine of healthy adults uh, well, that were sedentary but healthy. Okay, so that's important. And then it goes on to talk about power lifters. They exhibited a, a significantly greater bone mineral density uh, in the lower body and uh, partially in the upper body when they, um, when they were compared to just regular control groups or people who did regular exercise, essentially is what they called it, uh, and, or recreational exercises. And then, you know, of course, it lays out the, the purpose of the investigation to assess the bone mineral density in a wide variety of competitive athletes, okay? So let's get into the methods. So what they did, 135 athletes volunteered, okay? So they had several different competitive athlete populations represented in this study. So they had resistance training, uh, 41 resistance trained individuals, 33 college football players, 17 competitive uh, stand-up paddlers. Yes, that's a thing. Uh, 15 professional mixed martial artists, all of them were male, 10 track and field athletes, eight runners, and I think I might miss something in there, but you get the picture, okay? So there was a mixture of male and female for both, except for college football, obviously, and then uh, MMA athletes that were all male, okay? So they did DEXA, which is the gold standard to measure bone mineral density. Then they also did bod pod measurements for lean body mass, and they looked at some of the comparisons between uh, both of the types of measurements that they did, but let's, we're gonna stick to the DEXA scan and the bone mineral density for this, because this is the, the main thing I want you to take away. So. They also did, an after they took all the measurements with the DEXA scan and the bod pod, they did what's called an analysis of variance. So we're not gonna get into too much of the detail of the statistics. Uh, you can ask me some questions in the comments uh, we, or in the Patreon, uh, because there's gonna be an extended version of this where we go into much more detail about the article and its potential implications in the Patreon. So check it out uh, after you, if you hear this article. You should get all that you need from just this free version here but I will add more for the folks who are members of the Patreon. But an ANOVA essentially stands for the analysis of variance. And so a t-test a t would be done between two groups. And since we have more than two groups, we've got, I think, eight or nine groups, they look at, with respect to the dependent variable, which is what we're measuring, bone mineral density, they wanna see how the bone mineral density varies between the groups, okay? And so they express this by standard deviation, Okay, in this, in this chart here, all right? So it's pretty easy to see. College football and then MMA, uh, resistance training folks are all at the top. Okay, so I want you to keep that in mind for something a little bit later. Uh, but the two, the, the, the only statistically significant difference were college football players and then MMA athletes having the highest bone mineral density when compared to the other groups. So super interesting. The only ones that have really high impactful uh, movements in their sport, meaning they're getting hit multi-directionally with high strains and high magnitudes. So this was the only statistically significant difference, and there was not a statistically significant difference between football players and MMA athletes, uh, although the football playing group was a little bit, despite it being the biggest group, uh, was a little bit higher. So there were all kinds of, since there were more data points for college football players, the, the risk of them dropping down due to outliers is, is, is a little bit higher than the rest. Uh, but then again, if you don't have a lot of people in your group, then you don't really have a good representation. So we'll talk about that in the limitations uh, whenever we go over that. So those are the results. College football players and MMA uh, athletes have higher bone mineral density in this group in the way that they measured them in this specific moment in time than the other tested groups. And so the discussion is 
well, you have to kind of ask yourself, why is this the case? So we know that they had significantly higher bone mineral density than others included sports, and that MMA and football are really highly impactful sports. Okay, so this, in the discussion of the, the article, it says it's the first study to report bone mineral density of adult MMA athletes. So they look at, in the past, they've looked at boxing, wrestling, judo and wrestling, judo and karate, uh, but they haven't actually looked at specifically athletes that are mixed martial artists. And so it goes on to talk about that the most likely explanation for the high bone mineral density observed in athletes like this relates to a functional adaptation of the skeleton to mechanical loading. I talked about this, the, the mechanostat theory and, Ver, and Wolf's Law in the video that I, that I mentioned earlier. Uh, and it says, traditionally, this is described by Wolf's Law and more accurately described by the mechanostat hypothesis. The mechanostat hypothesis, which I have here, is essentially the hypothesis building upon uh, Wolf's Law that proposes bone tissues perceive their total mechanical environment and compare it with what is expected for the specific habitual circumstances. So, in other words, if you are getting very high mechanical loads at a high magnitude, at a high rate of strain, this is enough to cause small deformations in the bone and promote osteogenesis. Now, it goes on to say that the high loading or the high magnitude of varied patterns of stress and the dynamic strains at high rates both seem to contribute to osteogenesis or a promotion of an increase in bone mineral density. And it seems that MMA fighters and football players may have the best of both worlds, being that their training regimens involved resistance training, uh, they do some running and plyometric training, but they also lift weights. So, or excuse me, they also get punched and kicked. So this is, this is kind of the best of all three scenarios. We think that bone mineral density is influenced by, well actually, we pretty much know there's a consensus at this point that this is influenced by resistance training, some plyometrics, and now, coming up on the pipeline of research, high impacts, it, particularly when it comes to the mechanostat theory. So this would explain potentially why football players have the higher, the highest out of the groups because and as a football, as a, a former college football player, I can attest to this. We do a lot of resistance training. We do a lot of plyometrics, and we do a lot of power training in the form of you know ball throws and cleans and sprints. But we also get hit a whole hell of a lot. So this would make sense in that way. Uh, MMA athletes tend to train a little bit more with the repetitive, impactful. Like if they're sparring and they're kicking the bag and they're punching the bags, uh, and if they're grappling. Uh, but they, they tend to not lift weights as much as college football players. And so I think the college football players just may edge them out a little bit uh, when it comes to the bone mineral density gains that they have with respect to MMA athletes, or excuse me, football athletes, or yes, MMA athletes. So keep this in mind, there are certainly several uh, weaknesses and considerations to take when you're talking about potential implications in the training. But Read through the study, see what you think, see if you have uh, any problems with it. If you do, leave them down in the comments. Uh, but other than that, if you want to go into a little bit more detail, which I'll do here in a second, then join the Patreon. But now we're going to some of the strengths. So 